So thank you for the invitation, first of all. It's very nice to be here in uh, EHP Paris. And uh, okay, today, this is uh, a joint work with Piotr Kowalski. I'm going to present our work, uh, the recent work of uh, about, thank you, model theory of fields with some group actions. Uh, okay. So I've heard that many people here talked about uh, history of model theory in the sense that how model companion, model completion uh, came up in the history. And model companion of uh, inductive theory is the, is the theory of existentially closed models of the so I, there is a quote from uh, Bruno Poza. It's a little bit controversial. So he claims that the model comp completion, the search for model completion, is for uh, uh, is the ink bottle of the garrulous model theorists. But uh, he adds, I think uh, he gives uh, credit to the search for it in some sense. Model companion, the systematic research into mo into model companion when it exists is uh, is a good is a provide the subject with presentable theory. Uh, so we will be searching for model companions of uh, some certain theories. So uh, so what the examples of model companions are listed here. So theory of fields, the model companion of it is uh, the theory of algebraically closed fields. Uh, so when we have theory of ordered fields, we have real closed fields. Uh, so the theory of difference fields has a model companion, and it is the ACFA, as people know, uh, that it has been studied quite a lot. And the theory of differential fields has differentially closed fields. It has an axiomatization. Uh, linear orders has, without endpoints, say, has the dense linear orders without endpoints. It has uh, as the model companion. And the theory of graphs, in some sense, is uh, the model companion is the theory of random graph. Okay, these are companionable theories, and there are non-companionable companionable theories as well. So if you have the theory of groups, then it doesn't have a model companion. Uh, and also, if you have a field with two commuting automorphisms, <coughs> it doesn't have a model companion as well. I'll come back to these things later on uh, when we I mean, uh, we have more uh, about the theory of fields with group action. Okay. So, let me drink some water. We will talk, be talking about G fields, where G is a group. And uh, we have a group, fixed group with a fixed uh, set of generators, <laughs> finitely generated group. Uh, a G field is a field with the action, G action of the group on it. So this automorphisms, rho one to rho m, act on the field as uh, field automorphisms, as I said. Uh, so since we can define G fields, we can define G field extensions, G rings uh, as expected. So I want you to notice that this row i's uh, in the language can act uh, trivially, although the group that we mentioned is not the trivial group. Okay? So uh, we don't require anything for the action of the row i's for the beginning, for, as for a G field, definition of a G field. Uh, but if you are talking about existentially closed G fields, then we have uh, this, I mean, the action of the group is faithful. That's to say, it, I mean, whatever the group is, uh, the relations work. 
appropriately. So I have to define now the existentially closed G fields. Okay, what they are. We, feel, we fix a G field, <coughs> K, with the generator's row. Uh, we have a, if we have a tuple of variables, x1 to xn, this uh, G polynomial equations uh, consists of uh, several polynomials, f1 to fn, evaluated at the values of gi to gn at these points, okay? So this, these are, uh, and setting them equal to zero, these are polynomial equations for g fields, okay? Uh, where the variables are evaluated at uh, images of the elements of the group. So, and an existentially closed G field is, as one expects, now we can be more precise about it, is a, is a field where these, these kind of G polynomial equations, whenever they have a solution in an extension, they have solution in the field itself. Okay? So, what are their properties? Uh, we can always go up to a uh, existential, existentially closed G field extension. Like uh, in the algebraic closure, we can always construct an existential closed G field. Uh, if you take the group to be the, ident uh, the, the trivial group, then existentially closed G fields correspond to algebraically closed fields. Okay? And, uh, if we, the group is generated by a single element, and uh, then the existentially closed G fields uh, is the transformally closed fields, the models of ACFA in other sense. So, but the, I want to remark here that they don't have to be algebraically <laughs> closed all the time, existentially closed G fields. I'll come uh, be more, more precise about it. Uh, Okay, so these are some more properties of existentially closed G fields due to Sjorgen. Uh, I think he's, uh, he did a PhD at some point in, uh, where was it? But he didn't publish anything. So if K is an existentially closed G field, let's uh, denote the fixed field of the G by F. So then we have the following properties. First of all, uh, the F, the field F, and the fixed fields, they are both uh, perfect, perfect fields. So the fixed field and the extension K, the existentially closed G field, they are pseudo-algebraically closed, meaning that uh, every absolutely irreducible variety defined over this field has a point in it. Uh, so if we consider the fixed field and the algebraic closure of the fixed field in the extent, the K, the G field K, then the, the Galois group of this extension is the uh, profinite completion of the, the field G that we are considering. Okay? And, okay, so now, uh, if you are talking about the absolute Galois group of F, uh, it is the universal Fratini cover of uh, G hat, this profinite completion. So, remember, so we have a G field, uh, the profinite completion of G field, G, this G is the Galois group of the fixed field of G inside K, and its, its Pratini cover is the, Galois, uh, the absolute Galois group of the fixed field of F. Okay. And so, as I said before, this K the, doesn't have to be algebraically closed. It's, uh, so, it's, it's uh, Galois group, absolute Galois group of K is the kernel of the this cover map of the Fratini cover. So if this kernel is non-trivial, 
it doesn't have to be algebraically closed. Okay. So now uh, for the the we can now I mean I can be more precise about this model companion that I was talking about at the beginning. Uh, if the class of existentially closed G fields is elementary, then that has an axiomatization, then the resulting th theory is going to be called GTCF, whatever this G is. And we say this GTCF exists. Um, so this is the model companion of the theory of G fields, as I said before. So I'm repeating some of the examples that I have already given in this context. So if, again, if G is <coughs> trivial groups and GTCF is uh, the theory of algebraically closed fields, the theory of algebraically closed fields. Uh, if G is a free group on M generators, then GTCF exists and uh, this is the algebraically closed fields of uh, M, this ACFAM as uh, known in the area. Uh, so this is maybe new, that uh, if G is finite, it's a, it's a, if it's a finite group, then this GTCF exists and it is, uh, ex okay, it was proven independently by Sjörgen and also by Hoffman and Kowalski. Uh, so fine, for finite groups this is possible. And uh, this, I already mentioned this. Uh, that uh, if we have two commuting automorphisms, i.e. if we have the uh, z times z as the group G acting on the field, then uh, TCF doesn't exist, this uh, z times z TCF doesn't exist. And uh, this is a computation of uh, about the roots of unity, third roots of unity, uh, very intricate comp computation, but somehow the motivation for the Proof is very obscure for this case. Okay. So uh, we want to convert the axioms of ACFA to our this G field context. Okay. So we ha we fix a G field with the generators. So I also for technical reasons for now accept that uh, I also want the identity as uh, one of the generators. To, to add it in the language so that the notation becomes more easier. So we have the, the generator of the group sigma and the identity. So by a variety we have a, I mean, I mean a prime ideal of the kx. So it's irreducible and k reduced. So for, for any variety v, by, by sigma v, uh, we have sigma v, okay? Uh, what is sigma v? It's the, the variety generated by the images of the polynomials generating v. And uh, whenever we have this v and sigma v, we have this natural uh, map sigma between the k points of v and k points of sigma v. Okay. So now uh, a z pair, z is the group here, is a is a tuple of varieties, V and W, where W is a sub-variety of V cross sigma V. Okay? Where, and uh, the projections of this uh, W into both coordinates, uh, to V and to sigma V, are dominant. Okay? And axiom of, axioms of ACFA now can be stated in this new language as follows. We say that the difference field k sigma is existentially closed if and only if for every z pair, vw, this tuple of varieties, uh, satisfying these conditions, there is a point in vk uh, such that a comma sigma va is in the wk. Okay? So, okay, now we're going to we, the, our purpose is to generalize this kind of uh, axiomatization for general groups. So, axioms of for, for a finite, when we have a finite group G, 
Uh, now the axioms are the fo as follows. Um, okay, we list all the elements of the group one to uh, row one, and row one being the identity. This is, this is the set of. Uh, I mean, I don't take the generators. I take the all elements of the group, <laughs> and. Uh, if you have a pair of varieties, VW, it's, we call it a G pair. If W is a sub-variety of uh, rho V that I'm, I want to call it, this is the images of V under each element of the group, okay, the product of the images. So um, it's a sub-variety of this where, again, the projections are dominant. That's to say they are, I mean, the, of the same uh, dimension. And, uh, on, well, okay, so we have an iterativity condition for the finite group G as follows. So if pi i is the permutation giving the multiplication by the group element rho i to the <coughs> group elements, uh, coordinates, then we have uh, the action of rho i on w, the sub-variety, smaller variety w, uh, is given exactly by this pi i. So that's the, this is the iterativity condition uh, for i. So let me say it again. For any i, we have rho i of w is equal to the pi i of w, where this pi i is uh, the permutation of the uh, components of these components by uh, multiplication by rho i. Okay, this is the appropriate coordinate permutation. Okay, and uh, uh, Piotr and Daniel has a result about this finite uh, where axioms for finite uh, GTCF is the following. Uh, a field, G field, K rho is existentially closed if and only if for any G pair VW there is a point A in VK such that uh, rho 1A, rho EA, they are all in WK. Yes? Yes? Uh, What do you, do you I, I can't. This is a permutation by the, so you know, the, if you multiply the elements of the group, finite group G, by a fixed one of these elements, then this is going to give you a permutation of these elements of the group, right? Yes. Oh, the group is finite. The group is finite, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so the natural generalization for a fine, I mean, from finite groups to free groups is as follows. I mean, we have finite groups, we have free groups. Next, what is the next step is uh, the virtually free groups is the one, the thing that comes to mind first. Uh, and it's interesting that, I mean, when, while we were working on it, we noticed that these virtually free groups have many equivalent characterizations. And for example, it's uh, from this one characterization from theoretical computer science is that they are the groups that are recognized by this push down automata, whatever this is. But, uh, it's, they, are, they have context-free language. I mean, I mean this is like a search uh, words, phrases. So this is a, it, it is a famous theorem in com theoretical computer science. Uh, somehow it suggests some kind of finiteness elements in uh, this virtually free groups. Uh, also, if you look at the Cayley uh, graphs of virtually free groups, 
finitely generated virtually free groups. Uh, their tree width is finite. So the tree width is something, uh, is the following, is, is bounded actually. <laughs> tree width of a graph is, uh, so if you group the vertices of the graph so that it becomes a, a tree, so this is the minimum thing that you have to do to group the vertices of the graph to, to turn it into a tree. This, I mean, somehow it suggests that the Cayley graph of the virtually free groups doesn't have unbounded cycles. So it somehow bounds the size of the cycles in Cayley graphs. Okay, and a, a, another element of finiteness. So the, we are looking for a right, I mean, but this kind of didn't work for the iterativity conditions for axiomatizing the existentially closed G fields, but Peter then came up with a, yet another description of virtually free finitely generated groups. So, so we have this theorem, this is famous in the Bastar theory, this theorem. Uh, if you have a finitely generated uh, group, the followings are equivalent. Uh, H is virtually free, the first one, and uh, also H is isomorphic to the fundamental group of a finite graph of finite groups. I'm going to explain what they are. So virtually free groups, they correspond to the fundamental groups of finite graph of finite groups. Uh, so remember that for free groups we have the iterativity condition that we were mentioning for varieties was trivial. For finite groups, it's the one that is coming from the permutations. And uh, what is it for virtually free groups? Finitely generated virtually free groups. So a graph of groups. You see the definition, but let me say it again. So uh, a graph of groups is uh, is a graph where you attach a group to each vertex and each edge as follows. So, uh, for example, there are two, I mean, so this is a graph of groups. The vertices are these two groups. And edges, uh, A, say, one, two, which embeds in both uh, vertice, vertices. Uh, to the edge, there corresponds this group, which is, in some sense, isomorphic to a subgroup of both G1 and G2. Okay. Uh, fundamental group of graph of groups is obtained by two operations. First of all, you take uh, the maximal tree in the graph, and uh, uh, one of the maximal trees in the graph. And uh, for each edge inside the tree, like this one, uh, what you do is you, you take the uh, free product of these two groups over uh, the subgroup A12. So this is going to be G star A12, G2. Okay, for each edge in the tree, you do the following. For each edge uh, outside the tree, if you have something like this, for example, okay. this is G, and this is the subgroup A, so it has two embeddings of into, into, into the group G. Okay, if you have two embeddings of the subgroup A in G, two copies of it, and these two copies are isomorphic, there's an isomorphism between these two copies in A1 and A2, say, by alpha, this H and N extension is the extension which gives you uh, an extension of the group G where these two copies of A become conjugates by an element T that you add. So this is going to be G, it is denoted by G star T, where T is the conjugation given by this isomorphism of the two subgroups, a, a, I mean, isomorphic subgroups. 
Okay, so we have two uh, operations to generate uh, the fundamental group. Remember, a group is a finitely generated virtually free group is the fundamental group of a, a finite graph of fi where each edge is finite group. Okay, so somehow you amalgamate the um, the finite groups over the edge groups, and then you take the H and N extensions of everything. Luckily, the it is this this uh, fundamental group is independent of the choice of the maximal three that you pick inside this group. So, and so. What we need to do is do we have to figure out this iterativity conditions for these two operations. Uh, amalgamation over the edges and the edge and extensions. So uh, we do it as follows. For say suppose, suppose we have G1 and G2 and we have the trivial group as the edge group on top of it. Then the this is going to be the free product of G1 and G2. G2, right? So, if we, uh, so these are finite groups, remember. The, I mean, row one is going to denote all elements of G1. I, I don't know, row one. Um, yes. All elements of G1. And uh, row two is going to be the all elements of G2 is going to denote. And we are just going to identify the identity elements of these groups, these two groups. Okay, identity is going to be identified. And we get, uh, so we are looking for this G pair. Uh, BW is a G pair if whenever W is a sub subset of <laughs> Uh, v to the row V, product of all copies of uh, Vs, and such that the, uh, the projections are dominant. And moreover, for each group G1 and G2, the projections onto G1 and the projection onto G2 of these two, uh, so let me say it, B, row i, e comma row i, w, they form uh, a g pair, g i pair for each group g i. Okay? And uh, so this is for the trivial, trivial one. So each, each component is going to correspond to a finite group and, uh, and, uh, this, uh, and the axioms are going to be as uh, in the case of the iterativity condition is going to be in the case of finite groups in this sense. And okay, so whenever we have a, we have, a, we are uh, combining these two groups through this subgroup A, then what we do is we identify the elements of A uh, in this product and we get the iterativity conditions. So this amalgamated product uh, is somehow like this. And we also need to have uh, an example for the H and N extensions. Okay, let me erase the board. So let's uh, C2 times C2 be the product of uh, it's the Klein 4 group, 1 sigma tau gamma be the elements of it. Okay, of course there are two copies of C2 in it. So let alpha be the isomorphism between the two copies, this uh, 1 sigma to 1 tau, say this is alpha taking one copy to the other. 
So by, uh, I don't know, so this C2 times C2, if we have an edge, this alpha is going to correspond the, to, uh, uh, the, to the isomorphic, isomorphism taking this first copy to the second copy of C2. Okay? So what we will do is we are adding an element, T, make, uh, providing this conjugation. So we have the following uh, relation for this new element, T. Sigma times T is going to be T times tau in this new extension group, H and N extension. So for the axioms, we have this following triple, uh, one sigma tau gamma T, T sigma, T tau, and T gamma. Okay. This is going to be the row. So V W V W is going to be a G pair if this W is a subset of row V, which is I don't know V cross sigma V cross what is the last one T gamma V this product and okay. there is this is the first uh, row zero and this is going to be T row zero so there are two iterative conditions here first of all uh, V and the projection onto the first row zero coordinates <laughs> is going to be a C2 times C2 pair, like in the finite groups, finite iterativity condition. And the action of T, this, this T of the projection onto the first coordinates is going to be exactly this uh, projection onto the second coordinate, second, uh, second part of the coordinates. Uh, this is the iterativity condition for uh, HNN extensions, but in a very simplified way. So what we do is, so first of all, if you have a finite group of finite graphs, first of all, you get the maximal tree in it, you amalgamate everything, uh, everything through the edges, and then you get the uh, conditions, iterativity conditions for this amalgamated product. And then for the remaining edges outside of the tree, you do HNN extensions. This means that you're adding a new element for each uh, edge, giving you the uh, isomorphism of the subgroups. So, so these are, of course, if you list you, you if you're trying to list them, they make up a, a very complicated list of axioms. But at the end, uh, so we have the following theorem. If it's a finitely generated virtually free group, G, then this uh, GTCF exists, this existentially closed models of these uh, G fields are axiomatized as the previous axioms. OK, so properties. So when G is finite, this GTCF is uh, super simple and it's a finite rank. Uh, when G is infinite and it's free, then this GTCF is, sim this, uh, is a simple theory. So I mentioned this before. Uh, it's a result due to Sjorgen that uh, if G is a existentially closed, it's K uh, rho is existentially closed G field, then this K and the fixed field are both PAC, OK? Combining these with the results of Zoe, we have, uh, I mean, we, we, are we are going to conclude with something. But so this is the results uh, that we are mentioning. If you have a PAC field K, then uh, its theory is simple if and only if K is bounded, that's to say, 
the Galois group is small. So we have the following theorem. Uh, if G is finitely generated and virtually free, uh, it's infinite and not free, uh, then this kernel map, this, uh, this is, going, this is the, the, uh, the kernel of this map is not small. That's to say, this is, remember, this was the Galois group of K, uh, the G field K. So as a corollary, if this group is not small, since K is PAC, uh, we deduce that the theory cannot be simple. And uh, some, uh, because of, uh, I mean, also, I think Zoe mentioned somewhere that this is not even NTP2. Uh, for G finitely generated, virtually free, infinite, not free, not finite. The theory is a little complicated. Uh, so, okay, and this is simple if and only if either G is free or G is finite. So, this is more or less, uh, okay. <coughs> so I will want to finish by mentioning some further questions. So the first question is the following. So how, what is the class of all uh, groups for which this GTCF exists? So our, I mean, our candidate for this class is, of course, virtually free groups, finitely generated virtually group. So for, uh, we are always talking about a finitely generated group G for the moment. And, but the, we, we don't know. We don't know if it is true, but uh, we have a feeling that the class of uh, the class of virtually free groups uh, that are companionable, companionable are uh, okay. The, the class of G fields uh, where the theory is companionable is uh, the virtually free groups. And the second question is the following. So is there any specific uh, combinatorial properties of this theory, like except for being simple? They are, we know that it's not simple, it's not NTP2. Is there any like a uh, nice property? Hmm? And okay. So for if it's not finitely generated, Alice has a, as a result about this Kakfa, but this QTCF exists. It's due to Medvedev. And uh, we also know, don't know what the class could be. Maybe it is the locally, locally I mean, for, uh, for groups not finitely generated, which are not finitely generated, maybe they are locally virtually free groups. We don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> this is more or less it.